we're making flourless egg white pasta. Let's go! Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am really excited about this video that I'm presenting to you today. If you are new here, however, we do keto recipes and all things around keto food. I do hope you will take a look around at our other recipes and I hope you subscribe and if you do, thank you so much. So I have a weird accent and I know that some people have difficulty understanding me. If you're one of those people, please click on the CC button because we have subtitles available in most languages. I personally think this is a really good recipe and I want you to have it. This is a long video as there was a lot to pack in and it's because this is a very unique recipe. I wouldn't skip this part because I've got lots and lots of tips prior to the recipe that I'm going to give you but when you have decided what methods you're going to choose do go to our description box we've got timestamps so you can skip ahead to whichever chapter you prefer and one of the things I'm most excited about is the nutritional information it's low calorie just 185 15 fat and 14 protein and the total and net carbs are the same because there is no fiber and it's just 0.7 grams. If you're vegan you would replace the gelatin with agar agar and if you're allergic to nuts do note this is a nut free recipe we don't use any flour at all. The main ingredient is actually powdered cheese. When shopping for your powdered cheese, it's important that you check the ingredients list and it doesn't have any hidden traces of flour or anything that's non-keto. You also want to check the carb count and make sure that you can find the lowest carb count as possible. For this recipe, I'm using matured pecorino and in the past I've also used powdered parmesan. Some questions you might have is, does it extrude through a pasta machine? I would say no. <laughs> Here you see me trying it and I don't think it works. I wouldn't advise it. I must say I didn't try any oat fiber over it or any powdered cheese. So you may want to do that and give it a go. But for me, it didn't work just with the pasta on its own. I also tried uh, making pasta shapes, AKA macaroni with it. And the dough is a little bit too thin. It does work, but I found some holes in it. If you really want to make macaroni with this recipe, click on this link now. There are a whole other five pasta shapes that will work with this recipe. The sauces that you see me make in this video will be coming up in our next set of videos. So do stay tuned for that. At any point during this video, you will not see me separating out the noodles. It's because you don't have to. You would separate the noodles out just before you cook it. And for me, that is such a huge time saver and I was super stoked to find that I could get away with that. With my other pasta recipes, some people have asked, do they have to dehydrate? Here I'm showing you lasagna noodles before and after dehydration. You will see the dried lasagna noodles are much better. They are firmer and they are actually dry, whereas the non-dehydrated is still quite flexible and still like dough. And I'm not sure if you want to work with that or not, but it's your choice. Well, that's all my tips and tricks that I have for this recipe and I hope you get to make it and let me know what you think. Let's get into the recipe now. Add 180 grams of powdered cheese to a bowl, then one teaspoon of gelatin powder and two teaspoons of xanthan gum. You may wish to add a half a teaspoon of salt at this point depending on how you plan to use the pasta because you can add it in the sauce or boiling water too. Then I added a quarter teaspoon of turmeric and if you think mine turns out too yellow just go with a pinch or you can leave it out altogether. You want to use gloves when you mix 
your pasta because the turmeric will stay in your hands and try to get rid of all the lumps and make sure everything is fully combined in one color. And the last ingredient to add is two egg whites at room temperature. Now give it a good mix and here you can see I kneaded it as well and form your dough into a ball. The dough will have lots of cracks in it but because it's soft all those cracks will disappear when you roll it out so don't worry about it. To the bowl of your machine add 180 grams of powdered cheese, 1 teaspoon of gelatin powder or agar agar if you're doing vegan, 2 teaspoons of xanthan gum, a pinch to a quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder. Using a paddle attachment mix until you have no lumps then add 2 egg whites then mix again. Your dough won't come together as such but you will get big clumps. However, when you squeeze it and form it into a dough ball, it will come together nicely. This recipe is enough for four servings, but that's really only if you want to follow my macros. You can have a larger portion if you wish. Your dough should weigh about 255 grams and next separate out the dough so it's easy to work with. I shaped it a little and then between two sheets of baking paper you will see the edges crack as you roll and if that bothers you just pinch the crack so the dough comes together. Once fixed keep rolling and you'll find this dough very easy to work with and do try to get it as thin as possible. For fettuccine it's so easy right? Using a pizza or pasta cutter cut ribbons through the dough and here you see I'm trimming the edges because I have lots of dough left and will add the off cuts to that so there will be no wastage and just like that place it on an oven rack with the baking paper and it's ready to dehydrate. For lasagna noodles grab your favorite lasagna dish and measure the bottom and you make your noodles to match the size so that's what I'm doing here. You can even just cut out one sheet if that's what you prefer and when you're done lay the lasagna with the baking paper on a baking sheet ready for dehydration. To make spaghetti you will start by making a small cut, hitting reverse a few times and then making a line through the dough. I found that the dough sticks to the cutter at the edge of the dough and if you don't go back and forth at the start you might end up with a hot mess. And when all your spaghetti is cut lay it out on a baking sheet with the baking paper ready for dehydration. To make ravioli trim one side then add your filling. My filling is just ricotta with garlic powder and you want to leave about two inches on all sides between each ball of filling. Add another sheet of pasta on top and you will see that I trimmed off one edge and lined it up with the other straight side of the other pasta sheet. Now I'm just patting the pasta down to minimize air pockets and my pasta can surround my filling if that makes sense. Trim down the edges and middle, making sure you have plenty of pasta around the filling. Do note you will have lots of trimmings when you make ravioli so it's a good idea if you're making this shape first. Then you can add your off cuts to the other dough ball. Now we're going to seal the edges and first you want to grease a fork with either avocado or olive oil or even cooking spray because the dough is sticky when wet and if you press into it with the fork it's just going to stick to the fork. Now just press the bottom of your fork into the pasta going around the filling and because I can't cut a straight line to save my life I trimmed it again but also my ravioli ended up looking very neat and tidy. Place on a baking sheet or tray with your parchment paper and it's ready for dehydration. To make orecchetti quite simply cut circles into the rolled out dough. 
place one circle into your hand and gently press into the middle with the finger at the same time closing the palm of your other hand and then you can tidy up the sides if you need to then place on a baking sheet with the parchment paper and it's ready for dehydration To store your pasta, your best way to do that would be in the freezer. I tried it in the fridge and it only stayed fresh for a few days. To defrost your pasta, I wouldn't use the microwave because essentially you have a cheese product. Leave it on your bench top overnight or you can even take it straight from the freezer to the fridge if you're going to use it in some hours. After adding your pasta to a casserole dish and adding the cheese on top, you would simply bake at 320 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes, depending on how crispy you like your cheese. Bring some water to a boil, add your pasta and let it cook for one minute total. Remember your pasta is already cooked so essentially you're just heating it up. The other thing is add a pinch of salt if you haven't salted your pasta when you made it. Alright strain your pasta and do be gentle it will be very soft. And here is my cooked ravioli. It's soft and has not melted or split apart. You would then simply just add it to your pasta sauce. To cook the pasta in sauce, you would make your sauce first and when you have one minute left of cooking time, add the pasta and then just toss it around. You will see the pasta gets soft and then it's ready. Now you guys can see why we took days and days and days to make this video. It was long and a lot of information. If you get to make this pasta, please, pretty please, can you send me pictures on Facebook or Instagram? I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Get pasta making, stay safe and be well.